What is up YouTube? It's your boy Grizz, and today we're going to be attempting to rebuild the New York Jets. And like always, we got four years, and if I don't win a bowl, y'all get that $10 gift card. Now obviously the Jets are kind of a weird team for sure. Um, this season they are expected to be Super Bowl favorites whenever it first started. Obviously they signed trade for Aaron Rodgers in the offseason. Signed a lot of other great pieces, built basically a whole team around Rodgers, and then doesn't even last, I think, what was it, like 15 seconds or something like that, towards Achilles, and the rest is history from there. So obviously the Jets are in real life in a very difficult situation because they don't know what Aaron Rodgers is going to be after he gets back from injury. But in Madden, they're a very solid team. Um, obviously, there are some weaknesses like every team. For example, defensive tackle number two, their safeties. Probably one cornerback, but I think we can make it by with that. And then more or less just the cornerback, quarterback position and wide receivers. Obviously, it's a very serviceable team. Most of the players, for example, Garrett Wilson, Brees Hall, Sauce Gardner, Bryce Huff, Willie McDonald, all these guys progress very nicely, so I'm not too worried about it. We just got to get more talent around them to make them to set us up for Super Bowl contention. So, we'll make a few trades to clear up some cap here in year number one. I'm going to go ahead and set the our plays. If you guys were wondering what I use, I just now started using this. I go with Dallas's offensive playbook. And then this is a little weird one that I started using. Um, I use the Ravens with the Skies 3-4 um, for the defensive playbook. It seems to give me a lot more sacks and typically my sub linebacker in my slot corner typically get a lot of interceptions. So if you're trying to develop your guys, that is definitely what you want to use. But for now, we're going to see kind of what's some expiring deals that we can get rid of. And we'll kind of build off that. We might trade Aaron Rodgers. Um, obviously, he retires, I believe, after this season or maybe next season. And we're not going to keep him. I mean, obviously, we're going to be looking to draft that quarterback. But it's going to completely depend on what's out there for him. So let's get right into it. All right, guys. So for this first trade, I was kind of looking around. And I saw that Dewan Brown was making about... I believe it was about 22 mil. I might be wrong. It might be more or less 12 mil. And then Connor McGovern was making about four. We have a rookie starting at the center position. And then Carl Lawson was making about four, and he wasn't going to even see the playing field. So I called up the Bears, and I saw Jones. He's a 24, 25-year-old left tackle. That is making about three mil. And obviously, he's going to progress. He has star dev trade way faster than Duan Brown. So we pulled the trigger on this trade, traded three bench players for a starting caliber left tackle and an overall upgrade so we'll definitely take that all right guys and then same thing here uh tomlinson was making about 10.6 mil um schweitzer was making about two and he was up on the bench and then adams he wasn't making much but he kind of sweetened the deal a little bit so we trade these guys away in a fifth round pick for dickerson from the eagles 83 overall left guard he's 25 years old he's with us for two more years so definitely a solid trade for sure all right guys and then right here we are going to go ahead and sign miles jack to be our left outside linebacker all right guys and then right here i noticed that john franklin myers obviously he progresses very nicely he's a very good player but he does not have a spot on our team we have the rookie in mcdougall mcdonald mcdougall that's going to get playing time and then we also have an 80 overall right in that is playing the left in position that has three years left on his contract so he's not going anywhere so we call up the rams and if you guys know anything about sim young progresses nicely he typically is towards the top in the running for defensive rookie of the year we trade away franklin myers in a fourth we pick up young i was i think it's left outside linebacker was the or actually it was right up left outside linebacker is a whole other squad um Obviously, Walker is moving over and playing the right outside linebacker position. So that in turn means that Young is going to be our right outside linebacker for the season. Um, so a big jump from the 16 overall that was there previously. And this is what the squad's going to look like heading into year 
number one. Obviously, looking at the specialist wise, Garrett Wilson is going to be our slot. I'm cool with running with this wide receiver core because Lazard is younger, and obviously Wilson. And in all reality, Randall Cobb's not going to get it crazy looks, so I'm not too mad about it. Um, right left in, I'm cool with Bryce Huff being there. Jermaine Johnson there. Quentin Williams is actually. I know Bryce Huff does enter free agency. Typically, um, he doesn't usually sign back, so I am going to let that be a thing. I'm going to move up Quincy Williams to be our sub linebacker only because he is younger and hopefully we can get a dead trade on him. and then slot corner obviously sauce garner is going to be in our slot so that's what we're going to be looking like heading into year number one hopefully we can make the playoffs or at least make a run and who knows we might win a ring all right guys so here at mid-season obviously we have some pretty big signings to make Ty, Mackay Becton is a guy that we're 100% going to want to keep for the remainder of the rebuild. Already with that superstar is huge. And Bryce Young actually has interest in re-signing. So we're going to do that. Um, I don't mind his overall. Miles Jack kind of depends on how he performs. Saying, uh, Bryce Hall we're not going to bring back. We have corners. I do probably want... I mean, Whitehead we definitely want to bring back. How young he is. For right now, I do want to plan on replacing Chuck Clark. And then aside from that, that's all we're going to be signing for right now. Obviously, we're going to keep Bryce Hall and then Miles Jack in mind, depending on how everybody kind of performs. All right, guys. So here at the end of year number one, we go nine and eight, and that is good enough to make the playoffs. So we're in the wild card, and we'll be taking on the Los Angeles Chargers. But first, let's look at how we performed. We had the 7th best offense in the league, so 100% take that. And then defensively, doesn't say. So I don't know how we were actually. Aaron Rodgers had a solid year, 4,000 yards, 28 touchdowns and 13 interceptions. We'll definitely take that. Rushing-wise, Brees Hall, 1,208. Not too shabby for sure. Receiving-wise, Garrett Wilson had a great year. Randall Cobb had a good year. Same with Lazard. And then Conklin put up 6 touchdowns, so we'll take that. Defensively, C.J. Mosley had a great year tackle-wise. Quinn Williams with 11 sacks. 5.5 goes to Jermaine Johnson. 5 to Quincy Williams. 3.5 to Will McDonald. Okay. Four interceptions to C.J. Mosley. He's probably going to get a dev trade upgrade. Oop, I didn't to do that. Two go to Sauce Gardner. And then a couple more here and there. Hold on. Expecting to see any awards. I do. I was kind of expecting to see Rodgers come in the top 10. Obviously, it wasn't good enough. Garrett Wilson does come in at number 5 for Offensive Player of the Year. Defensive Player of the Year, Quinn Williams comes in at number 7. Offensive Rookie of the Year, I don't think we had anybody aside from that old lineman. But Defensive Rookie of the Year, McDonald comes in at number 7. And then Byron Young comes in at number 9. So we'll take that. Nothing crazy, but nothing terrible as well. But the thing that does matter is can we beat the Charters here in round one? And we don't. We lose by six. So that's not terrible. So with that being said, let's get right into the offseason. Make some signings. And if the draft does have someone decent, we probably will be drafting Aaron Rodgers' replacement here. Well, I should have traded Aaron Rodgers, and now I'm kind of pissed. He retired. That sucks. So now we have the draft replacement and we're not going to get any value out of the guy. Dang. That really sucks. It's really kicking the nuts. Gosh dang it. Alright guys, so here are the negotiation period. Obviously we're going to bring back Vera Tucker. Um, Miles Jack, we are going to let him walk. Um, he didn't really pop up anywhere on the stats. Bryce Hall, we're... Yeah, we're going to let Bryce Hall walk as well. All of our other corners above him are higher overall. Chuck Clark, does he want to come back on like a one-year deal? He does. Okay, we'll definitely take that in case we don't get a strong safety. No, we're not going to accept That is it. There. 
All right, guys, so far in free agency, we brought in Geno Stone and Jordan Brooks. Obviously, Jordan Brooks is coming in to fill uh, Miles Jack's role. And then Geno Stone's coming in to probably swap over the strong safety or we'll move Whitehead over there. Kind of depends. We also bring in Rashid Shahid to kind of be our wide receiver three, hopefully. If we can get a good wide receiver two to pair with Garrett Wilson. But regardless, he could probably be a solid wide receiver too as well. All right, guys. So with our first round pick, we take Jaron Hill. I know he is a normal dev trait, but his stats look crazy. So hopefully he is at least a high overall. That is the hope anyway. All right, guys. Here in year number two at the player resign period, we are definitely going to be wanting to bring back our 85 overall left guard. Um, he's not interested right now. Hopefully that changes. Same thing with DJ Reed. I'd love to bring him back as well. Okay, fair enough. Um, Conklin, we'll wait. Uh, Michael Carter, we'll offer him something. I think he wants to come back as well. Okay, cool. At least we got Carter back. So, I mean, worst case scenario, he might have to replace DJ Reed. I know he is the higher overall, but, I mean, it is what it is. CJ Mosley, I will be looking to replace. And then everybody else, yeah. Definitely not going to accept this player option for this guy or Sauce Garner. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. As you can see, we are 5-2 and two heading into midseason. So we'll take that for sure. Hopefully we can keep it up and make the playoffs. Wow, guys. So here in year number two, we go 15-2, and two, and that does grant us a first-round bye. Wow. We have the fifth-best offense in the league, and on the defensive side, the fourth-best defense. So definitely all around a great team. 3,900 yards, 31 touchdowns to only five interceptions for the Rook. We'll take that. Bryce Hall with 1,500 yards and 16 touchdowns. Definitely take that as well. And then Jaron Hill also had six rushing touchdowns. Receiving-wise, Garrett Wilson with 1,214. Raheed Shahid with 898 and four. And then we definitely need a wide receiver three and probably a new tight end. Defensively, CJ Mosley had a great year. Same with Quincy Williams and tackle-wise. 11 sacks for Bryce Huff. Eight and a half for Quentin Williams. Four and a half for Quincy Williams. Four and a half for Jermaine Johnson. Okay. Interception-wise, Sauce with four, Quincy Williams with two, and then one apiece for a few other people. Okay, okay. We will definitely 100% take that. As our very own Jaron Hill comes to number eight for MVP voting. Offensive Player of the Year, no Jets there. Defensive Player of the Year, Bryce Huff comes in at number five. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Jaron Hill wins that. We'll definitely take that. Hopefully that means he gets at least a dev trade upgrade to star, is the hope. But... What we all came here for. Who are we taking on in the divisional round? It is going to be the Cleveland Browns, who are no lightweight, that's for sure. Hopefully we can take them out. They did finish the year 10 and 7. So, come on, come on. Let's go, Jets. Ah, we lose by a touchdown, guys. That's, ah, man. So close, but yet so far. 15 and 2, and you just get dropped out in the divisional. That's a big kick in the nuts. But... It is what it is. It's only year number two. We still got two more good years ahead of us. So let's make the most out of it. All right, guys. So obviously we're going to be expect accepting Sauce Gardner's player option. Same thing with Garrett Wilson as he does go up to X Factor. So we'll 100% take that. Ah, Lane, come on, man. I need you. Does that entice you? Thank God. I know that is a huge pay chunk, but shoot. We needed him. Same with DJ Reed, man. Are you ready? I'll even up it up to six mil. Perfect. Thank God. Okay. Conklin, then we're going to let him walk. I think we can definitely get a higher than 76 overall. Tight end. Mosley's dropping very quickly. I think we'll probably let him walk as well because we do have Jordan Brooks. And then we also signed another middle linebacker, uh, Kenneth Murray, who is already a 78 overall. So he can slide right in there. Um, and then aside from that, I think that's it. So we definitely need a new tight end. And I think that's all we really need. So let's take a look at the lineup before we head into the free agency. And, oh, 
Wow. Um, hold on. You're telling me that our normal dev trait quarterback, that was an 80 overall. I don't know if I recorded that or not. He was an 80 overall coming out of the draft. Is a superstar at 91 overall. Holy crap. Honestly, winning offensive rookie of the year, I'm surprised he didn't get, I mean, well, no, I guess normal to start. He got two dev trait upgrades, so we'll take that. Um, like I said earlier, whenever we accept this option, Garrett Wilson does go up to X Factor. And then on the defensive side, uh, no dev trait upgrades yet. Uh, just Quentin Williams and Sauce Gardner with X Factor. Quinn's a 98. Sauce Gardner is a true 99. Okay, okay. Like I said, obviously Moses is going to walk, but we did sign Kenneth Murray, so I'm not too worried about that. Oh, oh I guess Jordan Lightheavy goes up to a star. We'll take that. Okay. Um, but aside from that. I mean, I guess we could try to get a better right outside linebacker. Jeremiah wusu Moa is probably the only guy that I would replace Byron Young with. Um, and then we definitely need some receivers. Receivers are the big focus and tight end. So let's go do it. All right, guys. So remember when I said Jeremiah wusu Moa? I spoke it into existence. We pick him up on a great deal. And then tight end-wise, there was not anybody. Like, seriously, Tyler Conklin was the highest rated guy. So... That's who we brought in. Um, I do have an offer out there for um, Amari Cooper, but I think we are, I mean, as good as he is, I think we will withdraw that, and I'd probably just go after Jerry Judy, because obviously Judy's younger, and he's a lot cheaper, I think. Cooper was on like 10 mil pop. So we'll take that. And then, um, we don't need any alignment. We don't need any D linemen. Unless there's like someone in here that's like, okay, you cannot say no to. I don't really need a middle linebacker. That cheap for an X Factor, though? Mmm. No, I won't, I won't do that. You don't need him. Corner? No, I'm okay with our corners. Same thing for the rest of our guys. No blanket ship. No whitehead is the same old guy. Do we get Judy? We do. All right. So free agency, we got Jeremiah Wusukoromoa, Jerry Judy, and Tyler Conklin on a re-sign. Not too shabby. Now, in the draft, I don't know that we need anybody. I'm gonna look at the lineup and really look that over. If we don't, I'm gonna make a big trade. Remember when I said I'd make a huge trade? So I threw a first round pick up on the trade block and the Steelers were offering Joey Porter Jr. So I was like, you know what? Let's do a bundle deal. We need a wide receiver three. I do like Shahid, but I'd like to get a high overall guy and we need to tie it in. That was something that we knew we needed. So I traded away Tyler Conklin, Shahid in our first. We picked up Pat Ferrari Muth, Joey Porter Jr., and George Pickens. Three positional needs. I mean, obviously, Joey Porter, we didn't really need a corner because we had Michael Carter, but he was maybe overall. So, six overall upgrade there. And we're rolling. So, there's a couple more positions that I want to kind of look at upgrading to completely solidify ourselves as a contender. But there's not much else we really need to do. But obviously, trades are entertaining. So, let me see what I can do. All right, guys, so here in year number two, a bit of a down year, I guess you'd call it. We went 12-5. and five. Um, Obviously, nothing to complain about. We still got a first round by, which is kind of crazy for 12-5. and five. Um, Statistically, we had the best offense in the league, and defensively, we were the 11th. So defense can improve, I guess, but Jaron Hill, wow. 4,300 yards, 40 touchdowns, only six interceptions, 75% completion percentage. Dang. Rushing-wise, Brees Hall, an amazing year, 1,514. Receiving-wise, 1,500 yards and 10 touchdowns out of Garrett Wilson. 983 and 16 out of George Pickens. 807 and 2 out of Judy. And 578 and 5 out of Friar Muth. Um, defensively, Owusu Kormoa and Quincy Williams both had over 100 tackles. 10 sacks for Quinn Williams. 7.5 for Jermaine Johnson. 7 for Bryce Huff. Definitely take that. Four picks for Joey Porter, two for Sauce Carter, two for Michael Carter, and two for Geno Stone. Okay. Did we win any awards? Yes, we did. Jaron Hill wins MVP in the second year. That's insane. 
Um, offensive player of the year, he comes in at number six, and then Garrett Wilson comes in at number nine. Def defensive player of the year, we didn't have anybody, and I don't think we, oh, I guess we did have some rookie. I didn't draft, so I don't know. And then, who do we take on in the divisional? It is going to be the Cleveland Browns. They beat us in year number one. Are they going to beat us here? Hopefully not. As. Man, I hate this so much. That is crazy. You saw the stats. We are a 90 overall squad. And we just get beat again. I hate Madden Sims so much. <laughs> All right, guys, here in the off season, the only thing that I really did was just resign our guys, but Hill is an X factor. That is crazy. In two years, he goes from a normal dev trade to an X factor. And then defensively, um, no big upgrades. At some point, I guess we signed Mike Edwards. That's probably why we lost, because this guy sucks. Um, so we definitely need a new strong safety. That's about it. All right. Let's see what we can do. Oops. I said we needed a strong safety. Jamal Adams is on the trade finder. So we're going to make it happen. All right. Then we're going to go ahead and replace Quay Walker with Joey Bosa. And then um, one of our ends, I forget his name, wasn't progressing very well. So we trade away Quincy Williams and a Hall of Picks. For Kenny Clark to kind of solidify the D-line, give us another X factor, and I think we're ready for the season. I did mistake Quincy Williams for Quay Walker, so let's go pick him up, shall we? And then I wanted to completely improve my middle linebacker position, so let's go ahead and pick up Michael Reed. I don't know who he is. Obviously, he's not an auto-generated rookie, but he has X factor. That's huge. Guys. I guess I owe you guys a $10 PlayStation gift card. But can someone please tell me how a 94 overall team only goes 9 and 8? Please. Let me look at the squad. How? Wow. Well, I guess that's it for the video. If you guys did enjoy, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I think our next rebuild is actually going to be a challenge. We're going to do a trade finder only. So if you guys think that would be a good idea, let me know in the comments. And comment on this video winner. If you want a chance to get that $10 PSN card, if you watched it all the way till the end, take it easy.